Hey there, and welcome to the ACMG Tutorials. Alright, so today we are going to be discussing how to add actions to the character. Now, we've already added the sprinting, and that was really simple. So, why not add shooting? That would be a, a, a really good next step, actually. So, in order to shoot, we need a sprite for the bullet, uh, whether it be a fireball or ice or shadow or a gun bullet uh, it's up to you so you create whatever you want to create but for the sake of the tutorial we're gonna keep it simple and if you plan on having multiple ammunition types you can make a group for it and I'm gonna call it ammo so let's create a sprite for the ammo and we're gonna name it SPR bullet and I do not have a custom sprite, so I'm going to go ahead and create my own, make it 32 by 32. And I'm just going to do... Uh, let's just do a circle. Let's do a yellow circle, actually. Nope, wrong order. Okay. I like that. That's good. Now let's just move it. Okay, and I'm go that, that's really big actually. That's like the size of our player. So I'm going to delete that and make a new one. Fair enough. And then I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to crop this so that it does not have a border size. And this is going to be my bullet. All right, after that is created, we need to move on to creating the object for it. And again, you can make a new group for it. And create the object. Name it object bullet. Make sure that it has the bullet sprite. And we can create a create event. In this create event, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up the bullet so that it, when it when it first spawns, when we create it on the screen, it's going to go in that direction and just set that motion. It, it's not going to you know have any special effects or anything like that. It's just going to move in that direction, and then if it reaches outside the screen, it gets destroyed, or if it hits an enemy, it gets destroyed. So the first oh, I need to actually do the code for that. So when it gets created, we're going to set the initial speed. Speed equals, let's just do four. Eh, six, that might be fast enough. Probably make it faster later on. Uh, so the speed's going to be six. And that, that's all we really need. Actually, the direction. Okay, so set the direction. And we want the direction to be the player's direction. So we're going to do direction equals, and then remember our player's on the screen, and this bullet's only going to spawn when this player's on the screen. So it's going to be the same direction as object player dot direction. This way it you know goes in the direction of the player. And when it collides on collision, with an enemy, we're going to drag a code block into there, and we want to destroy the bullet, which will actually damage the enemy in the future. So this will destroy it, so we're going to just type in instance underscore destroy. And the reason why it's instance, let me explain this a little bit, is because each object on the screen is an instance of that object. So not necessarily we're we destroying this object, we're destroying this instance of the object. So we're not completely getting rid of the object from the game, you know, so we can create more bullets in the future. And then we're going to create another one, and this one outside of the screen is actually going to be an other event, and it's outside room. And so same thing here is destroy the bullet. Wow, destory, yeah. Let's, let's make a destory. Sometimes I get ahead of myself when I'm typing. That's why autocomplete completes me. Alright, so I'm going to save that 
and click OK. Now, when we do anything, this bullet never spawns, so we actually need to create the bullet on an event. And so under the player's object, we're going to create a new event, and this is going to be whenever the space bar is pressed, actually. So when space is pressed, drag our code block into there, and we want to shoot a bullet. And then the bullet that we want to shoot is going to be the object we just created for the bullet. Now, in order to do this, we're going to you know, do another instance thing. So just follow along, and we're going to type in instance underscore and then create. So remember how I told you every object is an instance in the room? This is how you can depict this. So we're going to create a new instance at the player's x and y value. So it's going to spawn right on the center of him. And then we're going to define the object that we want to use. And this is going to be object bullet. And that is all you have to do. Because the bullet is set up in its own event, it's going to automatically set up the speed and the direction. So when we click our new game, we have our, our player here. And he's moving around. And you press space. And he fires. And it's going to have to modify that whole direction thing. But as you can see, it destroys it whenever it hits a player. And let's go ahead and figure out why this is not working. Alright, so I'm just going to check a quick fix here. And if this works, I can explain it. I'm not going to guarantee this works. Ah. Uh, okay. And then I think Hmm. Let's see, so it equals the player's direction. And then we set the angle of motion. All right, I'm actually going to stop the video here. Um, but obviously, it's going to cut out and be right back to where it is. But I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is what it is. Uh, I probably should have done this before, but I like to be candid. You never know what can happen. So I'll be right back with this. Okay, I'm back. That actually honestly only took two seconds. Uh, I figured out what it was. Uh, under the the uh, player's event where you are pressing the keys, let's let's take a second and look if uh, direction is ever set. And it's not. So technically, this is what we're supposed to do. And then we do the image angle equals to the direction. And this is a lot better coding. And I apologize for being silly like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and edit all of these. And this just makes it a lot easier because you can change the direction and the image angle will always face that direction. Okay, so this should fix it. And I, I, like I said, I haven't tested it, but just from my observations, it says the direction is the player's direction, and I was never sent in the player's direction. I just assumed it automatically thought that the image angle was the direction. My bad. So, <laughs> this should work. As you can see, shoots wherever the player's going. And so is my apologies, but I knew it was going to be a quick fix. And as you can see, the player can shoot as fast as they press the space button. Now, as long as that's on a button press, you know, and that's, that's what you want, that's no problem. But you want to add a reload function, right? You want to make it so the play you control how much the player can shoot and when they can shoot. Because 
that would be unfair to an enemy that only shoots every once in a while. So this is where we're going to we're going to do some checking and stuff. All right. Now we have the space key pressed, but we also want to check if the player is shooting. All right, this is where we're going to do the boolean. All right, so the player starts out and he's not shooting, and it's going to be BLN shooting equals false in his create event. And then after that, when the player presses space, it's going to set up and make sure that the, the engine knows that the player is shooting. So, so BLN shooting equals true. And this way, now the game engine knows that the player is shooting. But how do we how do we make it so we know the player's not shooting and we, we can allow him to shoot again? Now we're gonna get into an if check and an alarm. So first of all, we need to cut all of this. And if you're gonna paste anything else, make sure you save this somewhere. Um, I just use control X and I'm saving it in my clipboard or whatever you, you want to call it. And we're gonna do an if check. So we need to see if the player can shoot. Shoot, not shot. Check if the player can shoot. And then all we're gonna do for this is if, space, open parenthesis, and we're gonna check the Boolean. So we're gonna see if BLN shooting equals false, and then close parenthesis, and then space, and we're gonna open up a brace. Now I'm going to say brace, I'm not going to say curly bracket or curly thingy or anything like that. I'm going to call these braces so we can get into the lingo with each other. And you guys can understand when I'm like open parenthesis, close parenthesis, brace, space, and, you know, just so you guys understand that the brace is the shift uh, bracket. And so a brace is the squiggly line thingy and then a bracket is just the, the bracket. So we're going to do a brace and we're going to hit enter twice and we're going to use another brace. And we're going to go up in between the code and hit tab and we're going to write our code for what happens when the player is not shooting. Very simple. We're going to paste in our old code. When I say old code, I mean the code that we just used. And I like to format it, so I apologize for my my formatting timing, I guess. All right, and then further down, we don't want the player to shoot again, so we want to add a timer. So let's do the shooting timer. And these are going to be called alarms. Alarms, not all, all rams. So an alarm is kind of like a timer that ticks every second of the game's room speed. And we can set this up, and the room speed is 30. So 30 on an alarm would actually equal one second. So we want the player to be able to shoot, let's say every five seconds, yeah, three seconds, four seconds, three, six seconds. Okay, let's just do 90. <laughs> Good old three seconds. And once this is set up, the player will be able to shoot when this alarm is over. Now, we're not going to do anything to see if this BLN shooting is true because we don't need to, but you can set something like, if it is, just put it like a little display, you know, saying reloading or something. But as of right now, it doesn't matter. We're just going to set up the alarm now. So under add event, we're going to click on alarm. And since we're using alarm zero for the shooting, we're going to click on alarm zero. And we're going to drag in a code block. And all we're going to do is allow the player to shoot again. And by doing this, we do BLN shoot equals while shooting, make sure you use the variable, equals false. And what this does is whenever the player shoots using space, it's going to check if he is shooting. And if he's not shooting, which is the check for false, then we're going to create a bullet. And then we're going to say that the player is shooting. And we're going to set the alarm 0 to 90. So the player cannot shoot again until alarm 0 after 90 frames, I guess you'd say, or three seconds, it makes it false so the player can shoot again. So this should create a delay in the shooting. So whenever I hit space rapidly, it should not shoot a ton of bullets. 
it's only every three seconds. Okay, and you can also change this and make a variable for it. So let's do int, actually, p shoot speed equals, mm, we'll do two for, you know, two seconds. So we can do this by going to the event here. And instead of using 90, we can do another keyword called room speed and then we can times it by the player's shoot speed. This way we can always have our own custom speed and you want to get in the habit of that because that is amazing. You can change so many things when you do this. So you can do like slow down time so it shoots really slow or you know whatever you want to do. So we're going to test it here and so I should be able to shoot much more frequently. And now if we changed that variable from two to like, let's half it. So I should be able to shoot faster now. Yep. And that actually is a really good speed to be shooting at, you know, if you're just doing a simple shooter. And there you have it. Pretty simple, simple shooting. Uh, I mean, it, the tutorial went a little bit longer and I ran into a, a small bug, but everything was fixed and we're good to go. So if you guys have any questions, again, comment in the bottom, send me an email, shoot me a text, whatever you want to do. I will try my best to answer your questions. This is not an easy process, but it's a lot easier than it sounds. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and look forward to doing some more in the future. See you guys later.